feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. Hi everyone, I'm Eric Elkins, host of the Shrimp Tank Charleston Show. Today we have in the Double E Insurance and Financial Studios, Tanner Sutton, founder of Free Fly Apparel. Hear how Free Fly became one of America's fastest growing apparel companies in the U.S. Hear his story next on the Shrimp Tank Charleston. Double E helps individuals and companies navigate through the complex world of financial and insurance portfolios. The Shrimp Tank Charleston Show allows us the opportunity to interview and learn from the brightest entrepreneurs and leaders around. We hear their stories and discover what drove them to become so successful. We are a nationally syndicated podcast that can be heard and watched on YouTube, Google, Apple, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Spotify. You can also tune in and subscribe to our shows on our website, shrimptankpodcast.com slash Charleston, or check us out on the Double E website, www.doubleellc.com. I use the Shrimp Tank Charleston platform to continue elevating and enhancing my life as well as our clients' lives. Whether it's from networking or connecting our clients with our Shrimp Tank guests like a Tanner Sutton today, to opening doors for investment opportunities, to just learning from overachievers like this gentleman today. If you would like to schedule a call with myself or one of our advisors to learn more about how we help individuals and companies navigate through the world of insurance, financial, and retirement solutions, then please email us at info at double E llc.com that's d-o-u-b-l-e-e-l-l-c.com we want to serve you all right so we're sitting here talking to tanner sutton one of the co-founders of free fly apparel and right before we went to break we were talking about how you you know kind of started instituting the whole bamboo ingredient as as a strong source for the material and so when you how old are you when you're you're testing this whole thing to figure out to really get free fly starting to propel. How old was I when I started? Um, when you're doing this testing and you're yeah, 24 years old. Okay. So you're 24. I'm curious when you say you start using, you, you hear about, or you start using bamboo as one of the materials. How do you, um, test that kind of stuff? Like, I, I, I help me understand how do you make I know how to make I know people make shirts or or clothing, but how do you start saying to the manufacturer, I want twenty percent bamboo, thirty percent yeah. satin. Do you use satin on the clothes no. too? <laughs> <laughs> no, I um whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, I am um I was pretty naive when it came to the whole manufacturing process but i think the thing i had going for me is as a fly fishing guide i was the end user of it so i knew what the what the ultimate solution i wanted and i i literally when i would test fabrics and shirts like i would go wear a shirt like a long sleeve black shirt to a hot yoga class even and be like how how does this feel comfort wise how does it feel when i'm you know dripping sweat and or i'd go on a run or i'd be on the boat all day and so i I kind of went straight to like, what would our target customer think of this? And then are you just buying random things no, out there? No, I mean, w- working with, um, uh, you know, a f- family source of manufacturing and having them send me fabrics and, you know, she, our, our, our main source, um, who's a great family friend still, it w- just did a million favors for us and would, you know, do these little one-off, uh, different, you know, the same long sleeve shirt and 20 different fabrics. Really? And I'd, I'd go test it and I'd see what friends thought of it and, and would just say, you know, yes or no. And then she'd help reverse engineer of what needs to change to make it feel better and perform better. When you would do that, and let's just say you were like, oh God, I think this is it. I love it. This mm-hmm. feels great. And then I, I know the kind of character you are. You, you're a great listener. You ask a lot of questions. Um, you, you act way beyond your mean or your age. I mean, you're what, 35, 34. Mm-hmm. When they would say, to, when someone like me would go, I don't like this. Were you back then? Were you like, how do you not like this? Or were you like, okay, tell me why are you like, cause you seem like the type that would just keep questioning, help me understand and not being upset about it when you got sold on it. That's one of the reasons why I think you're so successful. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, especially in the background going in a family business, like you got to have thick skin and, and um, you know, whether it's personal opinions or, or real facts, I mean, you just got to be curious and know if you're working towards something even better. But yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I think people that have the same interests that I did or, or like the same 
activities and, and live the same lifestyle, those are the pieces of advice that I would, you know, really trust and say, yeah, that there's, that there's some weight to that. But, um, but it would be a close circle of friends. I wasn't sending it to hundreds of people, but, um, you know, I would, you know, whoever's like a fly fishing guide down here in Charleston, I would, you know, buddy of mine is a guide. I'd throw a couple hoodies on him or long sleeves and ask him what he thought of it. And I think people were interested and say like, man, this, I've never felt something like this before. So it was, it was a fun process. And so when, all right, so when you finally find that, that recipe for what's comfortable, your work, you still have a, a full-time job? Yep. I was, well, not full. I mean, as, as an independent sales rep, so your own hours. But I, I um, eventually when I decided to order, I said, the, this is the right fabric. You know, I had to order minimums. I think we started off with some long sleeves, some short sleeves, and then like some graphic tees, which is some name branding on it. And so when I, once that PO arrived to Charleston and I literally arrived at a house I was renting and we were storing inventory in the basement from there, I was like, okay, well now I got to go sell. So I put everything else aside and, uh, and I thought we were going to be, you know, in, I was targeting the fly fishing space cause that's what I knew. And so I went to, I put a bunch of shirts in the back of my truck and drive to consumer fishing shows and really? sling them on, on weekends. And that was a great, another piece of, you know, user testing and feedback to see what people thought of it. And then, um, and had some good early success and met some other sales reps in different parts of the country. And they said, Hey, it's, you know, I only have three products, but I'd be interested in repping this and going sell it to, to retail stores. And so that's, I mean, for the first year, that's pretty much how, how we made money of just going to consumer shows. And so when you, uh, so let's just, you have any, you remember like I, I invested, it cost me, I'm making this up, uh, $20,000 to make the shirts that I made. And we ended up closing and making 80. Like, do you remember what you did that year? I think our first year it was like a hundred thousand dollars total. And what, what did, what was the cost to make the shirts? Um, I mean, you can, yeah, but you can use probably 20% of that. Really? So, yeah. Wow. And so. And, and see, everybody thinks that it's so easy to just build a company. Mm. And you need to also realize, here's a gentleman who is driving to trade shows and and saying, please take, here, put this on, tell me what you think, and and just doing it one by one. It just didn't happen for you like like that. No, it was a grind. <laughs> All right, so then, then you're like, when is it where you're like, I'm done. I'm not going to rep any more lines. I'm just going to focus on free fly. That was, did you have the name free fly then? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. Uh, How'd you come up with free fly? I, I went through a million different versions and I was like, I like, you know, one of the core principles, of the brand is freedom, you know, of just feeling like, you know, you're unrestricted from what you're doing or what you're wearing. So, you know, that, and then fly fishing is like free fly is kind of just a sticky name. And, and did you come up with it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. I think it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's and I perfect. love the. If you look at the logo, oh, yeah. I love the the logo. Well, our first logo was different, and I I um, was not a huge fan of it. But I needed a logo to start. It was like lowercase and had this weird line going around the text. And um, we used to put our logo on the shoulder of shirts right here. And I like cringe when I still see some of those shirts <laughs> walking around town. But uh, we switched. Um, uh, probably four or five years in, we, we came up with this logo, and um, it uh, it's resonated well. So I have a free fly hat, mm-hmm. and I won't wear hats. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I play golf, and but I can only wear your free fly hat. If mm. I've got to wear a cap, it's the only cap I can wear <laughs> because I get, like, uh, headaches mm-hmm. from w- wearing caps. It just doesn't – I just – so I never wear them. And but your cap is the only cap I can wear that I'm comfortable wearing an actual cap, which again it goes into the whole story of how other people talk about your shirts, mm-hmm. your pants, all this stuff. I mean, you do have this, and it, it's amazing that people, whether they're in Charleston, South Carolina, or Bozeman, Montana, they it, how fun is it that people know and you like when you're in Montana. And people are wearing your stuff. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? It's cool. I mean, there's those pinch me moments early on when you'd be like, you know, 
we're not a national brand, but you'd be traveling somewhere and be like a music festival and, and see someone wearing it. You're like, I want to go shake this. Hand. Thank you. You know, <laughs> do you, do you go and say anything to people or is it just too much now? Cause you would be talking to people left and right. Cause there's well, so many, I see free flat all the time now. Yeah. Um, I can't remember someone on our marketing team, uh, uh five years ago, we came up with this idea. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of awkward to have those conversations. So we came up with this idea of found you in your free fly cards. And so it's like a little business card, but it's like, thank you for your support. And here's a little discount off your next order. So it's an easy icebreaker. And instead of saying, Hey, I like what you're wearing and thank you. I mean, I'm part of the company. So, um, it was just as nice, like a little customer service, personal touch thing. Well, you never given me any of that crap. Well, that's because you pay full price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, well, you live on Sullivan's. You can pay for that. That's right. For that stuff. All right. So when you start the company and it's full time, mm-hmm. you're still working out of the house. Still working out of the house. Um, so one of our you our, still one one in, was just you. It or? was me and our our foot in the door to get in a bunch of these fly shops. I had you know a few reps selling it to fly shops. Uh, the foot in the door for us was I came from my family's printing background and I said, why don't we print like your store logo? We'll offer a printing service and have low minimums, which turned out to just be a nightmare because it's um, printing on, we have a hard fabric to print on, but it's also like now we're just printing other people's stuff, like not anything to do with our own brand. So I, I, I got this little digital printer that was in my, my bedroom and hired a, a, college kid for the summer to once we'd get orders in uh he'd he'd literally one by one print shirts and fold them on my bed and uh we're shipping out orders to you know fly shops around the country that put their logo on and and it was cool but it wasn't scalable because if you mess up a print on a 50 dollars shirt that's an expensive mistake and we you know quickly realized that the fly fishing industry was pretty small it's pretty niche and printing stuff was not going to be a scalable business so um that's when, you know, about a year and a half in, we're like, okay, well, my sister started helping me in the nights and weekends when she was, her and her husband were at Nike for 10 years doing product marketing. and In she, Oregon? In Oregon, yeah. And she just had an interest of it and, and was, wanted to help her little brother. So she um, gave a lot of good feedback on um, creating some more uh, non-fishing styles for both men and, and women. And um, th- that was a turning point to say, let's go more after outdoor active industry. There's just, there's more opportunity there. So that's, that was a, that was a big shift and saying no printing and, and, you know, not just only fly fishing. And so that's, um, that I, I think was the, um, early start of her interest, my interest, her husband was at Nike and he, he, um, they're both getting burnt out. And so they, uh, they in 2013 uh, came down here and and saw what I was, saw the operation in person and you know took them to do all the fun things you do in Charleston of fishing and and uh, we uh, over drinks one night um, at home team barbecue I gave them like two of the big game changers and I uh, I just, in, on Sullivan's or on where? Sullivan's yeah, yeah. and uh, I presented the idea of like guys I I can't do this on my own but I I um, probably wouldn't do it with someone are you making money are you yeah. are you paying to, i mean and I, i'm are you living any kind of extravagant life at this time or is no, it it's no. you're just paying bills paying bills and i mean we weren't we weren't we were making money but not a lot but there were some cool early success stories from some of the retailers that were like man i'm seeing really strong sell through and how are you dealing with the um the demand like, is that an issue having to, Hey, I, w- I want a hundred thousand shirts or whatever they ask for. Yeah. I mean, I wish I had that problem back then, but no, I mean, it was, it was, you know, uh, it so, on such a small scale, like we didn't have the, and we were small independent specialty s- stores. So there wasn't a demand issue or a supply issue at that point. Cause we just had enough shirts to sell and it was a very simple business, but, um, but we're seeing some early traction and, and thought that, okay, this is, you know, market validated that uh, there's, this could go somewhere. And, um, and the timing worked out right. And, and I ended up asking them if you guys wanted to be partners in the business. And, um, they, uh, you know, fast forward five, six months later, they really decided that they wanted to leave the corporate life and quit their jobs at Nike on the same day and, and move down here. And so it was just the three of us at that point. Really? Mm-hmm. And then is that when, do, do the three of you all have your special niche of your gifts of what you're 
we do. We all have, well, three have marketing degrees, but we all have three different personalities and different skill sets within that. So I, um, you know, I've, I was the only first sales guy. And so I fell into sales and, uh, and my sister, her, her last job at Nike was on the digital side. And so she really helped get our e-commerce business off the ground. And she also played a hand in the women's product development. And then, um, my brother-in-law Austin is like the most detail oriented person in the world. So, uh, he had to quickly learn finances and accounting because no one else wanted to do it. Really, and uh, and then he he's great with details on product too. So we all had our buckets, and we still wear mm. those hats now. But um, but yeah, it was uh, all three of us shoved into one room, and um, we were all pulling orders for the first year until we started you know hiring staff and and going a little deeper. How long did it take when you you're starting to now hire beyond the three of you? Um, after they came on board. Yeah. When they came on board, I guess we had one part-time person and then like a year later, you know, it was two and then, you know, five and 10 and it just, and in terms of, uh, acceleration of growth, what kind of percentage wise did it change? Like from 13 to 15, how, what, how much did the company grow from the, for the, uh, over those two years? We were seeing, um, triple digit growth every year. So really, I mean, and it, it, you're going off of a really small scale, but, but yeah, I mean, it was, um, as we brought new products out and we expanded, um, to, you know, having a women's business and doing more in outdoor than fishing. Uh, and, and we were, we were one of the early adopters of Facebook advertising and getting a good e-commerce site up and running. So all those factors helped cause there, it was a small base and, um, it was, it was fun. It was scrappy and, and the, their hard lean days, but and have you met Ristine at this time? Well, I knew Ristine growing up. She actually used to Ristine play. being his wife. My wife, yeah. She um, she used to actually play tennis against my sister growing up in, in Montana, and uh, we all would travel to different tournaments together. And so I knew I knew of her, but it wasn't until we started um, expanding uh, distribution out to um, where she was living, in Austin, Texas, the, at the time. Um, and I think twenty. 14 that um, we reconnected and and uh, and then eventually I, I convinced her to move out here a year later and Ristine just to give her some props I, I absolutely love your wife she's like the sweetest mm-hmm. and so are you but your wife is so amazing she's awesome I, she's just I agree. she always has a smile on her face she's a beautiful woman you got two beautiful girls but and and the, but I want to prop because she won't give herself props she's a f- absolutely phenomenal tennis player who played in the NCAA championship for Texas, mm-hmm. correct? Yep. Did they win or did they? They took second to Stanford, but yeah, she's uh, by far the best athlete in our family, and hopefully our girls get her her abilities. Well, it doesn't as well. sound like it's bad for you either. <laughs> I mean, like if they get your your gene for being a tennis player and whatever the hell else you're. I mean, you probably can stab a bull or something. I mean, who knows what the hell you can do? I can't do anything. I, I'm a professional television watcher. That's what I'm really and good a at. a podcast host. Well, that's... Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that. Of it's course. not my full-time job, but... Right, so the company is starting to explode. What's... Give me, give me the... Is the margin still staying as high? Or, is, or is, are you seeing the revenue going up and the margins going down? Like, where is the struggle when you have that much growth? I, uh, a couple things. I mean, I think when you start looking at big inventory buys and manufacturing overseas, there's, you know, long lead times and you're having to, um, you know, pay down on POs early. So cash flow is an issue. But we are lucky that we, you know, pretty much we've still bootstrapped it today with a line of credit with the bank. And so I you know, had to navigate some of those issues. But um, I think the bank ever call you on those on those loans? No, we're on okay. The, yeah, because I believe that banks in the very near future, if you got a line of credit, if you think they're not going to call you, they're going to call. That's my belief. Because um, I think we're we're about to go into something totally different. I, I would agree. Um, but the big difference maker of you know we started the business all um, a wholesale business, so selling just to retailers. But once we got our direct consumer e commerce business up and running and ramping up, you know that was a great way to make a way better margin on products and not rely on other people to sell it. And and however successful they are means you are, we could, we could dictate the, you know, the message and the story. And, and, um, that was a great way to get early feedback and, you know, just be able to speak directly to the customer and, and, 
you know, you're, you're, you're not waiting on net 90 days to get paid on stuff. You're making it, you know, right away. So, so. the Dell, the Dell computer model. And so today, cause you're still in, you're still in plenty of retailers. Yeah. I mean, I see that. So I'm curious if we take a hundred percent of your revenue mm-hmm. and I won't dive into what your revenues are because you're a very private person. I won't <laughs> do that. But if I take your percentage of revenue, what percentage is retail versus e-commerce I guess would that be the two segments? Yeah, wholesale and e-commerce. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's majority e-commerce. Um, it's flexed, you know, um, the last three or four years. But yeah, I mean, it's it's somewhere around a seventy-five split, seventy-five twenty-five. What about men versus women? Sixty men, forty women. Really, forty on women. Mm-hmm. Which is a huge, another big opportunity. Even looking ahead, that um, my sister's big passion was like all outdoor brands get it wrong when it comes to women's clothing. They do the shrink it and pink it model and it's just terrible fitting and boxy. And so, um, being able to have good cuts and colors and styles that are flattering, like the, there's still a huge opportunity there. And, and now we're starting to get in the kids business. So it's fun to explore these new ones, but still staying focused on like the same principles we started. I want to give props out when you go to your website, there's this woman, very attractive, mm-hmm with another attractive man. I don't care about the guy, but the girl is obviously very attractive. Is that a relative family member? Who is that? Well, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. I'll show you all for, uh, but she's like in, she's like, like athletic. Um, luckily Jen's not going to listen to the show. Ristine is going to listen, but Jen won't. She has like athletic legs. Yeah. She's just really, yeah, I know you're talking about. So, the interesting part about, you know, do you need a senior model? Do you need me? For- I, I, I'm looking for male underwear models <laughs> at the moment. Um, the funny thing about, you know, photo shoots and models and things like that, that was something that I was like early on. I was like, you know, want to have a really good brand photography and uh, it can't look posed and things like that. So we've, even till today, like we, we work with people that actually, you know, professional models. They're just friends that are good looking and active that we go out there and, and, we'll go to a photo shoot somewhere like, you know, Bahamas or Costa Rica or Montana. And, um, we've done a lot of planning behind the scenes, but our friends that are the models, they, they feel like they're on vacation and we're just, you know, throwing them products, but they say, you know, do what you'd normally do on a fun surf or fishing trip, but we'll follow you along the way. And so, um, it comes out in photos too. It looks like an authentic experience. She's great. I don't know who she is, but, um, props out to her, uh, because that's a, you picked good models, especially to make a woman want to buy those mm-hmm. because it's not, she's not, you know, 80 pounds. Right. And, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I'm sure guys like the 80 pound woman, but I'm not into that. Okay. So the company is blowing up. You have dice, you know, diversified into women's clothes, men's clothes. Mm-hmm. And, when is it where you're like, how, how I want to be, you know, w- not only were you all over the U S like, did you, did you have your revenue coming primarily from certain states or certain areas? Yeah. I mean, the Southeast is still number one, um, just in our backyard here, but we started seeing some great success in like the, uh, South central area, you know, the Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, that region, and then Rocky, just because we we're, you know, as we, were, we grew up in Montana, um, just knew knew the shops and knew what the demand looked like there as well. So those are the three territories that have always been strong, and and we're now trying to grow more of like Midwest and Pacific Northwest more. But um, we knew the the Southeast. If we had to make our backyard our best area to you know have a great local following before we go too far out west or anywhere and else. As you're building this, and you because you're obviously building this name recognition. Another a brand that comes to mind that I see is Huck, mm-hmm. H U K. Mm-hmm. Are they are they like a fishing line? Huck, I, yeah, they're fishing a fishing brand. Okay, so that's like a competitor to you or what? Yeah, I mean that, I, I, they're in the fishing industry, and I think they um, it's much different, you know, fabric blend, and I think it's a little bit different of a market. But um, but yeah, I mean they would be one that's competing for floor space in a store, or trying to market to anglers. Okay, so are th- but. My, where I'm going, I'm not trying to give them any. This is not about Hook at all. Okay, they suck. <laughs> okay, what I'm going is: are they, are they are you starting to get phone calls from guys like that saying we want to buy Free Fly? Uh, no, no. I mean, it, we 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 knew we had uh, you know a long ways to go or things to accomplish to 
you know, ever think about that. But I mean, we, my family, my folks were in a business for 30 years and, and we liked the lifestyle of being able to own your business and raise your kids and all that. So it wasn't something that was high on our radar. So you weren't getting that. So then where do you go? Um, you want to scale to a, uh, to the, to a level where you go, we want to, we're going to bring in outside investor to participate in this because to help with the growth do, or do you even go there? Yeah. I mean, we, we had talked, we've talked about it over the years and, um, still feel like there's a lot to accomplish before that ever to happen. what we're going to happen or at least go, um, uh, see if it's an opportunity for us. We were fortunate. Um, you know, COVID was one of the, you know, I feel bad saying it, one of the best things that happened to our business because we had a product that was very applicable to being outside or working from home and just comfortable clothes. And so we saw huge growth from, you know, 2021 and, and, um, and at the end of last year, uh, we weren't, uh, shopping for anything like that, but we actually had a, a small family office based in Montana reach out to us. And, um, uh, one thing led to another and they, they have, um, became a you know minority partner in the business and they're very behind the scenes, but they have a great group of industry veterans that, you know, give awesome advice and, and, uh, have helped us think about scaling a business in a way that, you know, it's so far outside of our expertise. Yeah. I'm curious. So when you have these, these guys come and be almost like mentors slash advice givers, investor or whatever, give me an example of something that comes to mind. If you can, if you can't, then we'll move on where you say, this was an idea that was brought up by one of these people that I would have never thought about. That was just like, wow, that's, that's strong. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, cause I'm um, curious cause I've dealt with these, pri I've dealt with private equity. I've dealt mm -hmm. with uh, venture capitalist and I would say a lot of times I'm let down mm -hmm. that they're, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. but, but then there is sometimes those nuggets where you're like, God, I would have never thought about yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I, again, whoever that is that you're working with before you get in bed with it, it is like a marriage where you're dating before you, you, know, you got to build that trust. And, uh, we built that trust very quickly and spent a lot of time around these folks. And, um, uh, I think an example that comes to mind was, you know, we've, we've been heavily reliant on a, you know, single family manufacturing supply chain for a lot of years. And when things like COVID happen and there's factory shutdowns, you know, that that's scary f to be, you know, not diversified to have another factory to go to. So, um, that was a you know early idea from, from them of just helping diversify. Was that chain. before COVID even hit? We, we had, we've, we started some of conversations before COVID, but like when COVID hit, we we're like, man, you know, there's so many, there's a ton of brands that couldn't get any inventory. All their factories were shut down. We luckily still ours were operating and we could still get product. And, um, but it was eye opening to know that what, what could happen could, you know, you ruin your business overnight. And so, uh, then we started, you know, knocking on other doors to make sure we had other supply chain, other opportunities for manufacturing. Was that kind of scary because you're like, I'm so used to, I know these guys who manufacture this mm -hmm. for us, you know, they're like uh, family mm -hmm. where I can, what they say is real is true. And then now I'm going to work with this group over here. I've never even worked with. Before. Well, luckily, and that's when, you know, whether it's our employees in house that we've hired from other brands or, you know, um, any kind of advisors, they, they had the personal relationships with them that, that, had built trust over years. And so that's what we had to go on and say, you know, let's, let's try this. Let's, let's start the relationship and see how it goes. So it worked out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Guys, you're listening to the shrimp tank Charleston podcast. I'm your host, Eric Elkins. We're talking to Tanner Sutton, co-founder of free fly, co-owner, whatever sales guru, <laughs> lover, all these kind of things, but we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. What if I told you that a performance shirt could be equally technical and ridiculously comfortable? At FreeFly, we made it our mission to keep you comfortable while doing the things you love outside. Our secret sauce? Proprietary fabric blends made from bamboo. Beyond being buttery soft, bamboo has natural UPF protection, wicks moisture, and has antimicrobial properties. Welcome to the new world of performance apparel. Comfort on, adventure out. Welcome back, and thank you for tuning into the Shrimp Tank Charleston Show. I'm your host, Eric Elkins, and we've been talking to Tanner Sutton of Free Fly Apparel in the Double E Studios today, and we were talking about learning from mentors and gurus and, and building this apparel company that you have built that 
is so name recognition, not, not only in South Carolina, but throughout, in, in I know throughout the U S I don't know. Are you, are, are you doing, uh, any business outside the U S not much? No. Is no, it a goal that you're trying to go down to? the road? I think there's still a lot of opportunity here though. What's, uh, what's, what's the odds? Like, you know how they'd say when, if you start a restaurant, mm-hmm. the odds are terrible that it'll make it. Yeah. What's the odds of making it in an apparel I business? Don't, I don't know those exact numbers. I know. It's, Why don't you know that? Uh, cause can we get a new guest, please? <laughs> can we stop the interview? Uh, I, I think it's rare that, um, you maintain profitability for sure. Um, and scale and, and still, you know, being, a family company that, you know, don't, don't hate each other and all those things. Like it, a lot of things got to go right, but, um, we've been fortunate. We've had definitely a lot of good breaks, but we've had amazing, um, uh, people. I mean, our staff's like, if you ask any of a three own, of us owners, our proudest accomplishments by far are people like we just have really, really smart people that have helped. Are you us. doing anything special on how you're hiring those people and trying to vet them and figure out if are they going to be the right people on the bus? Yeah, we, I mean, we, we are very, deliberate and slow in our hiring process to make sure that they're right fit from a culture standpoint. And, um, the first thing we tell everyone is, you know, you check your ego at the door and, um, have a very just great, young, energetic, positive culture. But I think over the last 11 years of doing this, you you can pretty, pretty quickly find out if someone's going to be a good fit or not in the interview process. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy. And especially in this market right now, it's uh, finding great talent that, um, has experience in our industry. There's not a lot of outdoor brands in Charleston, so it's it's been are, tough. Are you bringing them from? Are they are they moving a here? Lot, a lot of like our our you know more senior hires are, are moving here, and we work with recruiters to help with that process. Which is which is at least a good thing that that you're located in Charleston mm-hmm. because that's such a great place to be able to move to. Yep. and live. If if I had to ask you, I want to ask you a couple questions, and I'm going to give the chance. We have some subscribers that I guess are fans of. They're obviously fans of mine, but. <laughs> they're they're also fans of yours, where they have some questions. So I'm going to get into that, and then we're going to call it a day because I, I love your story, and I could talk to you all day, and we will talk all day. We just won't talk on tape all day. But if if you could, if you had to say, what does it look like? What does Free Fly look like in five years? Give me what that vision looks like to you. Yeah. Um I think, I mean, we actually just been doing a lot of three-year planning recently. A big goal for us, um, there was an article written about us uh, end of last year um, from publication, and they described us as uh, like a niche southeast fishing outfitter. And I was kind of bothered by it because I was like, we, we do so much more than fishing, and we're not just southeast. Our product's applicable, you know, everywhere around the country, no matter what activity you're doing. Yeah. And uh, who, who the hell was this publication? Because I don't even fish. I play golf. I, I'm a professional television watcher. <laughs> and I, I absolutely love your apparel. Well, well, I appreciate that. Some people maybe have differing opinions or, you know, who knows? It was, it was one person's opinion. But the point there is, I think, from a end user standpoint or from a... Um, anyone else in the marketplace looking at our brand, you know, we definitely want to be a four season brand that's nationally recognized and well distributed around the country. And whether you're, you know, someone that lives in Maine or Colorado or South Carolina, that we have something for every season of the year for you from head to toe. And, um, we're competing with, the you know, all the other big national brands. And so I think there's a lot of distribution expansion and, and the way that we present our brand from a content standpoint of not just, on flats boats in Charleston to all the different activities go with it. So there's a, there's a lot of room to grow there from a, from a national presence standpoint. So that, that's definitely a big one. Um, and are you a public company? No, you're not. No, I know you're not now, but that's not one of the driving goals. Okay. And all right. So what about, what about, um, do you ever, do you think the, the business attire, the suit, the tie, you think we're just going to be in a a little downtime where like we don't have to do that right now, but you think it'll come back? I, I hope not. I hate suit and tie. So you will never go into that business? No. 
So I can't count on those clothes coming from you. No, we wear we wear jeans at weddings <laughs> in, in, in Montana. I, I know, I, but you know, unfortunately, sometimes I got. I, I'm fine with it. I, I love this is this is casual for me. So I'm um, I'm happy that it's at least this instead of the suit and tie. Dressed wear. up today. Well, you look great. These are all this is all free, free yeah, fly. Yeah. I mean, look at you. Look, look at these muscles on this they, gentleman. They are. It's unbelievable. Rather large. All right. Um, Let's take some questions from some subscribers that okay. have written some stuff in here. I have not vetted these questions. Kristen just handed them to me that came in through email. First question is from Darren from Highland Park, Illinois, which had a terrible thing happen uh, a couple weeks ago or three weeks ago. So we're thinking about you guys in Highland Park. If you started Free Fly today, what would you do different? It's a good question. What would you do different that you have learned when from the get-go? Um, or were you perfect from the get-go? No. If I did it today, I think one thing that would have been very helpful early on, which you just don't know what you don't know when you start a business, but creating more of like a brand guide of like here's our brand Bible of everything that we stand for from a value standpoint and, and be able to put all of business decisions through that filter to understand our why and communicate that for everything that we do. You just fly by the seat of your pants because you're just trying to survive early on. But um, those are things that took like 10 years to develop of, of you know, trying to, you know, whether it's your principles on your product or the way that you market your brand or whatever it is it would have made it a lot easier for, you know, hiring staff or, you know, explaining what we do to a retailer. It was, it was, I'm glad things worked out the way they did, but um, those are some things that are early of like, just, man, I, I need to be a little more buttoned up here. And, and I didn't know that at the time. I've definitely learned by every, every mistake in the book. That's a great, great response to that. Cause I feel like I struggle with that. Um, in it, it's in my business, um, so I, I get where you're going with that because you 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 have the vision and what the principles and values are, and then we sometimes just do a terrible job constantly translating it. You know, like mm-hmm. you mentioned freedom. Like I don't even know that free for freedom mm-hmm. was you know one of those things. Right. All right, Bob and Maureen, they are very loyal listeners from Pittsburgh, PA. What is your biggest strength in business and what is your biggest weakness in business? Another good question. Um, I think our strength is this is this is yours. Oh mine personally. Yours. Oh, yes. oh, oh. They said what is Tanner's biggest strength? Um Okay. They didn't say that, but I'm saying it. Yeah. I I think for me as you know, the founder of the brand, when we just got going and the idea I had for the brand and the vision for it, which is still holds true today of just who we are and what we stand for. I think being able to navigate what, what are the right decisions for the brand? What are the right marketing channels? You know, is this, is this on brand or is this not on brand? To me, I like I got to be the protector of the brand, and I, I got to know if, if if that just feels off or it's not quite right. You're very comfortable when it comes to those decisions, yeah, like that. It's, that's it's like, like okay. it's easy. You know, th- those are the things that I, I really enjoy because I want to make sure that we're not doing something or trying to, um, you know, just be everything to everyone, and we we, we stand for something. And I want to make sure we st- we maintain that path. Weakness, um, I'm I'm not as organized as I'd like to be. And that's partly because I've stretched in a lot of different departments of, you know, leadership running the business of, you know, wear a hat in the wholesale side of the business and the brand side of the business. And so I have a hard time. We, we talked about that essentialism book before we jumped in here of, of just being laser focused on the right things at the right time. I, it, it's hard to juggle a lot of balls for me and compartmental compartmentalize everything. And then, go home to my wife and kids and fo- focus on them completely. Uh-huh. It, it's hard to stay organized. And I mean, I, I, it's a constant struggle. I think sure it's so do. hard for so many people. I, I'm going to tell you what I think, what I've witnessed. One of your biggest strengths is, is your listening skills, but also 
you just are gifted with this trust, this aura of, I can trust Tanner Sutton. Well, like thanks. there's just that. And then I can also tell you one of your weaknesses. Let's hear it. You, you, your, your worst, you're worse at responding to a text than I am, which is really bad. Can you believe that? He's worse than me. I don't know. I saw, I saw your, <laughs> your phone today, was today, on the table here. I think there's like 300 unread text messages. <laughs> so yeah, I am not a great text. And your responder. wife is terrible too at it too. So both of you, that's your weakness. Thank All you. right. John from Columbia, South Carolina writes, what do you worry about consistently about your business? What keeps you up at night? Um, Especially I mean, right now. Yeah. I mean, I, global economy, supply chain, all those things that you can't, the things that worry you, the things you can't control, which again, why would I worry about things I can't control? But those are the things that could have, you know, forever lasting impacts on the business. Um, I would say the, uh, yeah, I mean, right now it, it is the state of the economy and, and what the next six or 12 months could look like from consumer spending to jobs and employees. All those things are keeping me up at night and, it's it's a bummer, but it those are real things. I mean, things are a lot different now. Are you having vodka pickle juices more than than usual? I, I am not having vodka pickle juices, but your your uh, your recipe is pretty good. I think I, you, Thank you. you can make it a lot better than I could. Thank you. All right, David from Charleston says, "Will Eric receive free fly clothes for the for free forever?" Oh, mm-hmm. that's that's a terrible. I mean, I'm sorry. I I don't know how that got in there. Um, Don't bother these questions. <laughs> but that's that, that's not a bad idea. I mean, do you because of the publicity you'll get from the show? If you do this modeling contract we talked about, there's an opportunity. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Last question. Chastity from Bozeman, Montana. Chastity. When you think of that name, it yeah, it's not good. Uh, but I appreciate you being a listener, Chastity. So I'm just teasing. Can you teach me how to fly fish next time you are in Montana? Do you know a chastity in Montana? I, I, I don't, but um, I mean, for the right price, anything's possible. No, I, I still love, that's one of the things we just got back from Montana and we're just now getting my four-year-old super into fishing. So I, I do enjoy the teaching aspect of it. When I was guiding, I enjoyed other people catching fish as much as I would because you're part of it. So um, yeah, we'll see chastity. All right, so ch- in chastity, she she probably works nights, so she has plenty of time during the day to to uh, go fishing, fly fishing. Do you f- would you ever fly fish at night? Is there? Yeah, yeah, I used to in college. You go fly fishing with um, like mouse pattern, like a, a trout will actually eat a mouse. So it looks like a little mouse. Will you, you, will you take Will you take me fly fishing? I'd love to. Yeah, where do, can we do it? We do here. here. Yeah, we, yeah. we go inshore for redfish all the time. Okay, and then we we eat those. No. We don't. We throw them back. Okay. Can we eat those? You can. You know, I feel sorry for, on a last note, I love talking to you first off. I love I love free fly apparel, guys. If you have never worn free fly apparel, whether it's their their hats, their their shirts, their t-shirts, their pants, their shorts, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. It, it, I promise you, you will become a loyal uh what do I want to say? Loyal customer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Loyal customer. After you try one piece, I'm not saying this. I'm telling you this. It, it, there's no doubt because I've never met someone who said, Oh, I can't stand free fly. <laughs> Everyone loves it when they have tried it. So I, and Thanks. for me to like a cap is amazing, but that's not what I was going to say. What bothers me because both Tanner and I live on Sullivan's Island which is on on the near the you know there's there's a beach are these fishermen that are come and fish on the beach mm-hmm. and they get in the way when I'm oh, trying to swim in the ocean yeah. because I have to look out for their thing and then when they pull in they're not good fishermen I'm not but mm-hmm. they're they're not either yeah and then they pull in the fish and then they can't get the hook out of the fish mm-hmm and Kristen, Kristen's a big fisherman, so she oh, cool. she she gets this. Um, so when I watch them on the beach when they're taking the hook out, the fish's mouth is completely. It's almost like they have cut the mouth off. They can't get yep. the hook out, 
and then the fish is bleeding everywhere. And then instead of just, why don't you just put it out of its misery and kill it? Like, let it die. It does not want to go back in the ocean. They take it finally out. Blood is gushing out. And then they throw it back in. Like, that fish wants to go and swim and live a life with this hole in its mouth. You know what I mean? Do you see this stuff? It, this is just, it bothers me. It depends what kind of fish it is for me. I, I, I like certain fish, other than, you know, more, some more than others. But I do not like, I mean, there's certain places that's like, if you're going by some rocks on the beach or whatever, that's, that's great. But when you're in like one of the main beach stations and you're sitting there on a Saturday afternoon and there's a guy throwing cut molt in the water and you have to worry about sharks swimming, it's not that fun of a day. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if whatever you enjoy doing, that, that's great. But to me, that's not a very enjoyable experience of ripping fish's mouth out. I, 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 honestly, I would just cut the, the line and let it live with the hook in it. I think that would be more comfortable than what they did to it. A little lip piercing? Yeah. Yeah. So if you are one of those people, don't, don't fish on the beach. You, you need to go where people aren't around because we, we don't want you. But if you're buying free fly, so be it. Um, I guess you can do that or at least wear it. Do my clients, do my avid listeners get any kind of discount because you were on the shrimp tank? Um, well, no is the answer to that question. <laughs> um, yeah, I, okay. uh, yeah, our girls got to go to college. Okay, I understand. I completely understand. But th- we'll talk about my discount, uh, uh, David's question earlier. For about sure. For free clothes forever. Guys, great show today. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Tanner Sutton of Free Fly. Please check out our previous episodes on the various podcast channels as well as you can watch the video portion of some of these interviews on YouTube. Just go to YouTube under the search menu, type in The Shrimp Tank Charleston, our website where you can also hear the episodes, previous episodes such as Xavier McDaniel, the NBA All-Star, Marquise Ogden, who was a professional football player. This is just uh, was like athlete month. Um, then we're coming out with the episode with Sean Elliott, head football coach. That's coming, and we've had so many great shows. And this is just another one to add to the to the great shows we've already had, having Tanner and Free Fly. I can't thank you enough for being on. But if you do want to go to the, sh- to the website, it's shrimptankpodcast.com slash Charleston become a subscriber, fan, or maybe even a guest. If you or your company would like to schedule a call with with Double E, my, my company, to discuss performing an audit on your insurance, financial, or retirement s- situations, please email us at info at com. Lastly, if you think you or you know of someone that is an entrepreneur or leader like a Tanner Sutton, which your story is amazing from one person to what you are now, it's c- unbelievable, and Thanks. to be known in this United States of America where people know free fly uh, it's unbelievable uh, to me that is unbelievable and to be able to watch people wear your stuff is crazy to me but making an impact like a Tanner Sutton then please contact our producer Kristen Kilman at kk at double e d o u b l e e l l c dot com I'm Eric Elkins thank you and keep grinding I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank Welcome to the Shrimp Tank Charleston Show. I'm your host, Eric Elkins. But in real life, I'm an entrepreneur and founder of Double E Insurance and Financial Solutions. Double E helps individuals and companies navigate through their financial insurance portfolios. Double E provides clients an entertaining and unique experience. The Shrimp Tank Charleston Show allows us the opportunity to interview and learn from the brightest entrepreneurs and leaders around. We dive into their journey and discover what drove them to become so successful. We will make sure we get out of them not only the wins, but also the losses that they have had on their journey. We are a nationally syndicated podcast that can be heard and watched on YouTube, Google, Apple, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. You can also tune in and subscribe to our shows on our website, shrimptankpodcast.com slash Charleston, or check us out on the Double E website, doubleellc.com.